going on guys, it's Simo. Now today I wanted to bring to you a video discussing how to prepare for YCS Anaheim, or really any YCS or very large tournament. Hell, you can even apply this logic to a smaller tournament like a regionals, because the same logic applies to pretty much any tournament, I would say outside of locals, because locals is, there's a lot more variance to that because there's so much going on, there's so many different types of players, so many different decks, and the skill gap generally isn't as high as a higher tier event like a regional or a YCS, etc, etc. So, what you want to do is when you're preparing for an event, and if you haven't been preparing already, you might be a little bit behind because you need to prepare so much if you want to do well. The more time you put into an event, more often than not, the better you're going to do because you're going to be more knowledgeable about the format, about all the different cards being played, about the meta. All these different things is going to help you succeed at a large scale event. So the biggest thing you want to look at when going into an event, or I should say before going into an event, is analyzing the meta itself. Because if you can solve the meta, if you can look at it and objectively say, these are the best decks, this is what I'm going to be playing against, and if you can find, you know, one concrete solution to defeat all three of those decks consistently, then congratulations, you've solved the meta. And we've seen it done before by plenty of players in the past. So for YCS Anaheim specifically, we're going to look at the best decks, or rather I should say the decks that you should expect to be going up against at the event. So it's pretty definitive right now that ABC variants and Metal Foes variants are the top two current decks at the moment. And you can look at this by looking at really any past regional results, any past ARG results and things like that. These two decks have pretty much solidified themselves in that slot as the decks to beat for this upcoming event. And it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty obvious why. I mean, the decks are crazy good. The consistency is good enough between both decks that, you know, they can do, it's a fair balance between consistency and power. And while ABC kind of more favors the power side of that, Malfos kind of more favors the consistency side of the spectrum, but both decks do incredibly well enough that you're going to be seeing a majority of the players at YCS Anaheim using both of these decks. But the thing is that you also need to consider, you also need to consider the lower decks that are also going to be appearing at the top tables, especially if you're going to be considering yourself to do, um, you know, very well at the event. For example, you know, Minerva Sworn, even though Minerva does cost a lot of money, there are going to be players at this event that are going to be playing Minerva Sworn. So that's something you also need to consider. That's a deck that you're going to want to learn, going to want to prepare for, and also maybe have some sort of siding strategy potentially for the deck. Because if you go up against it and you're not prepared, then that could ultimately just end your tournament run. But Minerva's kind of... Uh, an anomaly in this case, because like I said, Minerva is incredibly expensive, while there are plenty of them out there, and enough that, you know, you might see it enough at the event that it could pose an issue to you, compared to some of the other decks that are more available, and can still do as competitively well, that's something you shouldn't worry about as much. Now, compared to something like Paleozoic Frogs, or something like that, now that's a deck you should definitely learn, because especially since the Paleozoic deck is a deck full of trap monsters, the mechanics are much different than, you know, something you might want to consider traditional Yu-Gi-Oh! and things like that. That's a deck that you're really going to want to learn and brush yourself up on the knowledge of rulings and things like that. And also how to side and defeat the deck with whatever deck you're deciding to take to the event. Because based off of past regional results and ARG results, the deck's doing extremely well. You know, ABC and Metal Foes is still, I would say, considerably above it because... Paleozoic's being a trap-based deck, it's inherently slower, but I think the fact that a lot of people are inexperienced with how the deck functions is really what's giving the Paleozoic players an advantage, not to mention that Tree Toad, as well as its other Xyz pool, is pretty fucking solid. Now, you also have other decks, too, that you're going to want to, you know, be prepared for, at least to an extent. You know, you've got stuff like Dark Synchro. You know, you've got Beer Burning Abyss PK Fire. You know, there's still plenty of other competitively viable decks. But when you're doing your overall analysis of the meta, you kind of just want to break it down in what your opinion, what you see is... How much do you think these decks are going to be represented at this event? You know, like I said, obviously, Metal Foes 
and ABC are going to be the most represented at this event, and that's pretty much a given at this point. So, you know, when constructing your side deck or even your main deck at this point, you're going to be wanting to think of options that are going to help you in those matchups to help give you an advantage. But when it comes down to the other part of the pie chart, you're going to want to look at, okay, out of all of my other available options, what's going to be the most represented besides the best decks? You know, Blue Eyes is another one that I didn't even mention. That deck is still incredibly good. Blue Eyes Spear Dragon is no card to scoff at. The deck's still doing competitively well, even in an ABC-rich format. The deck has a fairly decent Metal Foes matchup. And, you know, it's just, it's another deck that you do have to prepare for. So, if, in your analysis, if you feel that you, a lot of Blue Eyes players are going to be there as well, a lot of Burning Abyss PK Fire players, a lot of Paleozoic players, a lot of Magic Spectre players, whatever it is that you come to the conclusion of, that's the first step that you need to take in preparing your deck building, your side deck building, everything like that, so that you're going to have as much competitive success at YCS Anaheim as possible. So, that's kind of the video I wanted to bring to you today. Today. And like I said, you can extrapolate this logic and really apply it to any large scale tournament to help you do better in helping your deck building and helping your knowledge of all the different decks in the current meta. And you know, even if you're playing an anti meta or a rogue deck, just being knowledgeable and knowing how these decks operate, how they function, and how they can be countered is going to tremendously, tremendously help your competitive success at these events. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think is going to be the dark horse at YCS Anaheim. You know, are we going to see some really crazy fucking artifact build out there? Or are we just going to see some just some crazy shit? I mean, who knows? Anything's possible. People have broken formats before, and I'm really excited to see what people come up with because I will be at YCS Anaheim in a couple weeks. So if you're there, be sure to say hi. Be sure to like the video as always, subscribe to the channel for more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh content, and back me on Patreon because just by pledging $1 a month, you're investing in my ability to bring you phenomenal Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thank you guys so much again for watching. We'll see you next time.